Hey everyone, it's Tim here, joining your life group this week. We are beginning a five-week series uh, on how to belong to a life group. That's one of the five pursuits if you've been paying attention to our sermons the past few weeks. We are calling this series right now that you're doing the five pursuits of a life group member, and we're so excited for what your group can possibly get out of this. But before we get started on any of the stuff that I want to share with you today, I want you to pause me, and I want you as a group to answer these questions, okay? So here's the questions. They're going to come on the screen in a minute, but here's the questions I want you to answer as a group. What is the new vision statement at Sarasota Christian Church? And so I want you to be able to come up with that answer. And then what are the five pursuits we have been talking about um, weekly? And so we want, we want you to answer those questions. So pause me. I'll come back and talk. You guys sort those out together. Welcome back, and I got to tell you, we are so excited about this vision of pursuing Jesus, transforming lives, going after the five pursuits together. We really believe that God is going to bring about so much transformation for you, uh, for the people in your group, for anyone that's in our church, and even the people that we're connected to that aren't in our church yet. And so we're excited about this vision. We're excited about you participating in this part of the vision. Um, to belong to a life group. And so you're here, you're in a life group. You may be a life group vet. You've been in so many life groups. You love it. Um, it's just what you've done. This may be the first time you're in a life group ever. This may be the first time you're in a life group here at SCC. But I'm glad that you're here. Um, and, and the reason why we do life groups is because we believe that belonging to a life group is absolutely essential to your pursuit of Jesus and to our vision of transforming lives. And we think they're so important. And the, there's really one reason why we think life groups are so important, because Jesus himself led a small group of 12 other people. He asked them to follow him. They went through life together. They were his 12 disciples. His best ministry was done with the small group that he led. They had the most lasting impact. People came to his teachings and healings, but the people he influenced the most, the people that he transformed the most, the people that transformed the most in the world were the people in his small group and his small circle. Um, and that's Jesus' greatest impact. And we want to reduplicate that. And that's why we think it's so important to pursue belong together. For eight years of my youth, I lived in Lincoln, Nebraska, and I loved living in Lincoln, Nebraska. And if you grow up in Nebraska, by default, you are a college football fan. I mean, it's just, it ran everything in the state, everything in the town. Um, and the reason why that is, is because the Nebraska Cornhuskers have been a dominant college football team for over half a century. In fact, they hold the longest streak for sellout attendance. In other words, every game since 1962 has been sold out. And now that stadium holds over 90,000 people. So for since 1962, 348 consecutive games, Nebraska football has the most attendance uh, sellouts of anybody. And that's just absolutely unheard of. They own it by a lot. Um, and the reason, you know, that's an unheard of streak. And, and we might ask, hey, the, why is that? And, and there's, two re there's two things, really. The first thing is there's an overwhelming passion in Nebraska for football. I mean, it's just true. Everybody loves it. Everybody goes for it, and they follow it. Um, the other reason is there really isn't anything else to do in Nebraska. Um, and, and so just there, there's not even enough people. I can't even believe that they fill the stadium. I mean, there's not very many people in Nebraska, but every week over 90,000 people um, show up to a game. And so they have this streak because of passion um, in their life. And we think that the first pursuit of a life group member, just like our church, um, you could pursue the five things, attend, belong. Uh, you could pursue serve, give, invite uh, from a church level. But we also think you can pursue those things as a life group member. And so we think that one of the, the thing I want to talk about today is how to practice or how to pursue attend with your life group. Because I believe that life group is the most attacked hour of or two of the week, the most attacked time of your week. Um, why, why do I believe that? Because I think that's when schedules fill up. That's when you get invited to other things. 
That's when you're going to get tired. That's when your kids are going to be crazy. That's when you're going to be tempted to think, do I even need to go this week? Uh, sometimes you're going to flat out be like, I don't even want to go tonight because I'd rather do this or I just don't feel like this. But it's so important that we attend and we show up in life group because passion fuels attendance. And what I mean by that is what you care about, you will do. You're going to do what you care about. And if you care about pursuing Jesus, transforming lives, your life, others' lives, then then you're going to attend. You're going to attend a service, and you're here at Life Group, and you're going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to pursue attend right here in my Life Group. I'm going to try to be here physically as often as I can. I know I'm going to get attacked. I know I'm going to get pulled away. I know, I know that those things are going to happen, but I understand that I have a passion for this, and I'm going to pursue attendance. And so today, we're going to talk a little bit about what's going to help me or you or all of you passionately pursue attend in your life group. We have to learn how to cultivate that. Just as I said earlier, Jesus led a transforming small group. And I want to look at the story of how that group began and how those disciples first got passionate or became passionate about the group itself. Um, Because we're going to need passion if we're going to fuel your attend. You're going to need to want to be where you are weekly as this season, as seasons of life continue to hit and schedules go crazy. And so I want to look at this. It's in Luke chapter 5. Verse 1 through 11, we're going to read this story together. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water. Let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and you haven't, we haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of the fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on you will catch men. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. I think this story, this beginning of Jesus' group is is fascinating because here's the scene. Jesus comes up, and uh, there's people that are going to be in his group there, and then they're all in this kind of large gathering. They're, They're fishermen, so he says, hey, let's get in these boats. Let me do my teaching thing. And so you get this large crowd teaching image, and then Jesus is finished. When he finishes his big teaching, he then turns inwardly to his group of guys that he's with, and he says, hey, why don't we put ourselves out into deep water? And so now the, the, you know, the performance is over, the lesson is done, he's turning inward to his, his circle, and he's saying, let's go deep together. Let's go to deep water. And, and that's significant because... You, you and I can't go deep relationally or mentally in a large group setting. It just can't be done. And it's so important. And the only way that you're going to be able to go deep is to show up um, and be here and pursue a tent. That's the only way you're going to be able to go deep. And that's what Jesus did with his group. And that's what we need to be about in our group. Um, Jesus is saying, now that the large group thing is done, let's, a few of us continue Together, And that's what Jesus did, and so that's what we're trying to do as well. And as we look at this invitation to go deeper, to go smaller, um, Simon Peter, in verse 5 of this, he almost refuses. He's like, hey, we worked hard all night. Um, you know, we, we put a lot of work in. We already heard your teaching. Like, can't we just go home? Like, like I'm tired. I got to work tomorrow. I got to go see my family. Uh, maybe he said something like, hey, we got to fish tomorrow. Maybe he's like, I've got to pick up my kids from school. Maybe he's like, then we have to hit soccer practice. And, and then I want to get home so I can watch uh, the first episode of Roman Idol um, and do that and with my wife. And, you know, we just got all these things going on. 
on. And so we see that Peter is tempted to not show up. He's tempted to not go. He's tempted to not go smaller and deeper with Jesus in a group. And so he's tempted um, to say, I'm tired. I'm not sure if I want to go. And that happens to us when we face the decision of coming to life group. And it will happen to you um, during this time you're in this life group. Um, but let me tell you, attending must be a priority. You've got to have passion. It's going to fuel your attend, but attending must be a priority. You need to show up physically. Like, you need to be here with your friend, like here. Um, so right now, if you haven't done this, if you keep any kind of calendar on your phone, maybe it's a planner, however you do this, please mark off the time your life group meets for the rest of this year. Just go ahead and do it and just give it, give it to that. Otherwise, something else is going to take that spot. So you need to plan to be here physically ahead of time. The other thing is when you want to attend, it must be a priority. Is Not only do you need to show up physically, you need to show up mentally. When you're here, get off your phone. Uh, don't th Stop thinking about work. Stop thinking about the thing that you need to do after group. Don't show up in a hurry. Come ready to engage with others. Have some energy. Be, be mentally ready, emotionally ready. Show up to life group. Like God is going to do something through this conversation. He's going to, he might use you. He might do something for someone else that night. Understand that you're participating in that because you've been called to go deeper. And that's what Jesus wants us to do. Additionally, later on in this verse, they, decide, they do decide to go. Okay, I'll go. Even though it doesn't feel like I've got the schedule going on, I'm going to show up. And what ends up happening is this huge catch takes place. And not, so this big transforming thing happens because they decide to show up. Even when they didn't feel like it, they showed up, and God does this amazing miracle right in front of them. And not only that, it isn't just for Peter or Simon Peter who's there. All the other people had to come and help bring about this crazy miracle. They had to catch, bring all the fish into the boat. And so it took the whole group was impacted by one event of transformation. And that's so important. Uh, imagine if some of those guys were like, hey, I, I just I didn't want to, you know, I, I was done. I, I didn't want to hear any more of what Jesus had to say or I already saw you guys all day or whatever. And they didn't show up. They would have missed that transforming experience. And not only that, they wouldn't have been able to catch as much fish because they wouldn't have been able to pull as much up. So it's so important to attend. It's so important. It has to be a priority. Um, and you're going to see amazing things because of it. Because when you attend, when you commit to attending to this group, there is potential for transformation. And if you're not here, that potential shrinks. And for your own transformation, definitely. But for somebody else, it shrinks just a little bit because you might have something that somebody needs to hear. You might have a concern that somebody needs to hear. You might say a prayer that somebody needs to hear, and so you need to be there for that. This, the story finishes um, with Jesus saying, all right, you've seen my power. Now come follow me. Come follow me. Um, let's be a part of something big. He says, let's catch men. And so he talks about the purpose of a life group, and that's really to love people and to change the world. If you've ever seen the Bible series on that they did on the History Channel, and that scene, it says, let's change the world. And that's essentially what being a part of a life group can do, is you can be a part of others' lives. You can help each other transform. Uh, you can help people through deepest pains and hurts in their life. Um, we're catching people at the deepest things that are going on in their hearts, and we can help them in a time of grief. We can actually move people to be more like Jesus. We can actually obey what we're learning together. When someone's actually hurting, you can talk to them. You can't do that in a large group. You can't do that at a service. You can't do that at an event. It has to take place in a small circle uh, of people that you've taken, taken time to trust and know and shown up consistently for. And this is exciting because we can help people grow in their relationship with God, get through a marriage struggle, a financial struggle. It's a very exciting thing that we get to be a part of. It can also be very scary because it could cause you to unveil some things in your life that you might not want to unveil or fix. And Peter's reaction was, I'm a sinful man. When you go deep with God, he's going to show you where you can transform. The cool thing is, is being in a group of people that love you, and no matter what, we can kind of live out the gospel together. If you want to pursue attending your group, you have to have a passion for it. You're going to do what you care about. That's what you're going to be about. You have to make it a priority. And you have to know that there's potential for transformation just by pursuing this attend thing here together. 
I really hope that you've enjoyed this, this talk this week. There's going to be some questions in your group. I really hope you guys dig in today uh, and have a great life group.